attention. <sighs> I remember playing in class. I wonder if the robots do too. In Beijing, the Phase 2 Beijing Humanoid Robot Data Training Center is a full-scale robot academy where humanoids train in lifelike factories and homes. The robots practice everything from packing parcels to cooking meals through thousands of carefully guided repetitions. If they can master dumplings, I'll be really impressed. Human trainers work side by side with robots, capturing high quality labeled data that fuels smarter AI models. The robots complete up to 1,250 repetition in order to master a single movement. Now that's a patient teacher. This centralized scenario based approach solves one of the robot's biggest challenges reliable training data at scale. The graduation rate is over 95%. You kids better pick it up. And once graduated, these robots head straight into the workforce, serving in factories, logistic hubs, power inspection, and public events. Debt-free and having a job right out of school? If only all college graduates could be so lucky. But if you've got a job to do, you'll need reliable parts to do it, so let's check one out in our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The Endurus Hauser Cerebar PMC21 pressure sensor is a compact, rugged pressure transmitter designed for reliable, absolute, or gauge pressure measurement in harsh industrial environments. The device supports pressure ranges up to 40 bar, delivers a standard 4 to 20 milliampere analog output, and features a G1/2 threaded process connection. It uses an oil-free Serifier ceramic sensor for stable, accurate performance across liquids, gases, vapors, and dust. Housed in 316L stainless steel with IP68 protection, it withstands demanding conditions. With high accuracy and hazardous area approvals available, the Endress Hauser Cerebar PMC21 is highly suitable for industrial process control applications. Check them out today by visiting mauser.com or by clicking the link below. Valve pressure laws is always a challenge. To explain more, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. When we're dealing with pneumatic systems, pressure losses in all the components are a really big deal that we can't ignore, especially when it comes to valves. There's a few different kinds of valves, but each one is rated in the amount of pressure based on the amount of flow that you can expect to lose. And so you have to account for all of those losses and still have enough pressure to drive the end application. For a quick example of why we have these pressure losses, let's take a look at the inside of a standard ball valve. Now these ball valves, when we open and close the ball, inside a perfect opening is aligning itself with the passage of the fluid and there's very little restriction to the flow. Therefore, we have almost no loss of pressure because it can free flow right through the valve. Now on the other hand, an industrial valve with a spool inside has passageways that force the fluid, air, to move all over the place inside because it requires a lot of energy to force the air through all of these passageways, we lose a lot of energy. And that energy conversion happens in form of heat and noise, and therefore requires more pressure from our source to force the air through, compensating for this pressure loss, to be sure that we have enough pressure left at the end to drive our load devices, like our cylinders and air motors and things like that. Andy, back to you. Thank you, David. Are you a smart bite or smart bit? Let's find out in our control automation quiz, Smart Bit. Okay, in our Smart Bit quiz, you must match the right answer to its question in less than three seconds. The questions are scored using actuator output percentage, and today we'll be testing your knowledge on micro proximity detectors. At the end, you'll see if you're a smart bite or smart bit. Let's begin with our first question for 25%. Inside a compact high-speed automation cell, a control engineer watches a micro-pick-in-place robot struggle as a proximity sensor misfires near a VFD-driven motor. Which design choice most improves detection reliability? Is it A, 
increasing sensor sensitivity, or B, using a shielded sensor with a reduced sensing field. And the answer is B, using a shielded sensor with a reduced sensing field. Shielding limits EMI coupling and false triggering caused by VFD switching noise. Okay, let's move on to our next question worth 25%. Oh no, someone leaves a window open during a storm and humidity rises. Now a microcapacitive sensor begins missing plastic parts as humidity rises during the storm. Which factor most impacts repeatability when humidity causes a microcapacitive sensor to miss plastic parts on a conveyor? Is it A, ambient humidity variation, or B, switching frequency of the PLC input module? And the answer is A, an ambient humidity variation. Capacitive sensors are highly sensitive to dielectric changes from moisture in air. Okay, let's move on to our final question worth 50%. During a safety audit, redundant microproximity sensors are tested. One is found stuck on, quietly masking a dangerous condition. In a safety critical application using redundant microproximity sensors, which failure mode is more dangerous if undetected? Is it A, sensor stuck on, or B, sensor stuck off? The answer is A, sensor stuck on. A stuck on fault falsely indicates presence, preventing motion stop and masking hazards. Well, how did you do? You can have another go at it right now by clicking the link on your screen. And be sure to check out our other videos for the latest in control automation.